Dub 87. You've been there before, you did it again. The Fast Twitch Fiber Freak on the historic episode 14 of the Big Lenny Podcast. Hello, Dan St. Fernando on the West Coast. W, Bretto, Early Kyler. Fast Twitch Fiber Freak, Dub 87. Yes, this is Tom. Can you imagine a flood in the desert? If that's not an end time prophecy, I don't know what is. But in any event, those of you that are, aren't aware, hello, Bible slaves. Adam McLeod, the modern day Winston Churchill, underwent a structural integrity operation in his knee joint that over years of overuse, weightlifting, running, and other various activities wear and tear. Dan's for St. Fernando's in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. I remember Muscle Mag International headquarters and the late Robert Kennedy had an address in Brampton. Thank you for letting us know, Dan. I thought you were more or less Seattle, Washington, or even California. Ryan K. Productions is representing Georgetown, two great maniacs. And if you saw the x-rays, Adam's knee joint was pretty much a mess. But as you can see from his recovery room footage that he took it in stride just like everything else. And it's just a matter of normal living for him, which is severe injuries, stricken with cancer, and of course, almost drawn and quartered by a car accident as a child, as when he was not in a car. Uh, another miraculous comeback, although Adam is a very humble guy and he just takes it in stride and we can all learn from him. Lee Frazier, that's right. We're seeing a lot of things that are prophesied in the Bible about wars, rumors of wars. We're hearing that, natural disasters, and we have to be careful. Hello, me. Good day, he says, from Australia. Danny Alameda is here as well. Local maniac. Chris B., hello, sir. The workouts are the top priority, as they should be all of us. Dan St. Fernando is starting to think the United States maniacs were in greater number than Canadian maniacs, but he may be not be he may not be so sure we have a great Canadian fan base. Slauser says Adam is my hero. Well, he should be all of our hero. And I'm gonna tell you why very soon. Early Kyler says the best cycle to do after test and equipoise. What are the maniacs think? Well, I would give you an option, early color. I would say, if you're not having any joint pain, I would go on some low dose trend with the test. However, if you're starting to have joint pain, and if this is your second cycle, again, my thoughts on DECA are not to use it early, use it when you have it. So that's critical in starting DECA. And I went over that before, but save the DECA for when you are really having bad pain and you will see your strength skyrocket. So make use of a little bit of orals early, Kyler. Don't be afraid to go back get some good old Dianabol. The company I did a shout out with Dianabol, I'm taking a low dose Danibol. Instead of going on 400 milligrams of test a week, I'm taking 20 milligrams of that Dianabol daily and it's going to be about 50 days it was a packet of 100 with 200 megs of test a week and to tell you the truth with the oral diuretics the water is coming out of me so i'm thankful for that however with all orals and to tell you the truth all injectables i've definitely rethought some of the things that i believed in in the past 
you don't want to stay on orals more than four to eight weeks. Daniel Alameda, I never carb cycled. I kept the carbs low. And I think that I lost some muscle because of that. So how to cook with me? John Fetterman is actually doesn't surprise me. If you look at some of his documentaries online, you know, he's a Democrat and he's a big dope smoker. But John Fetterman was also a college football player. I think he played at Albany. He was an offensive tackle. And he's always trained with weights. And as you can see, he recently contacted Dr. Sean Baker for a diet because he was having a whole slew of problems. And I think it's pretty obvious he went on a carnivore diet, lost some weight, and got his thinking correct again. Again, as I'll say this a thousand times, if you're not taking in the whole eggs, the red meat, and with saturated fat red meat, such as ground beef, ribeyes, which is very essential for the human body, as well as obviously hydrating yourself and sleeping correctly, you're going to have some mental issues and you're going to have physical issues. And you're going to be prone to a lot of diseases as well as cancer. So John Fetterman is simply speaking common sense, which you will get from that type of diet, sleep pattern, training pattern, of course, watching the Big Lenny podcast. And for entertainment, watch the classic Delray Misfits episodes. And you can watch it on your giant smart TVs. And you can introduce them to your children, your children's children. And as I've always said before, there may never another be another Delray Fitness. There may never another be another time when we're able to film at that gym with all your unique misfits and maniacs. But just like the great science fiction uh, television show that originated in the late 60s, early 70s, Star Trek. It wasn't on for many years, but every episode is a classic. And whatever remake they made, whatever movie they made, was never the same as the original. So that's the way I look at, at Prince Andrew's classic Delray Misfits episodes. I believe there's over a hundred of them on the Delray Misfits channel. And I encourage everyone to watch, rewatch, as you will pick up different things that you might've missed or kind of do a own psychoanalysis of each character from what they, how they express themselves during those episodes. And I can assure you, none of that was ever scripted. That's just basic fly on the wall, going to the gym. And I, I admit there was maybe a little too much talking, but there was some intense training too. So I can honestly say that I got some good workouts in and it spurred me on in many moments where because we were behind the camera, myself and a few others have got some good lifts in. Cat Abandoner, Chuck, Jason, myself, Big J Masters. And uh, it's a shame that Prince Andrew might have cut his workout short for that, but I'm sure he's getting it in now as he looks bigger than ever. One of the few that gains muscle over 40, which I've seen. So I'm very proud of John Fetterman. I don't care what it says, what his party is affiliated with. And it doesn't surprise me a bit. And he was also a mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania, which is a very run down, you know, what kind of city around Pittsburgh. And I've never been there as a child, but I, it was definitely on the list of Pittsburgh area, bad neighborhoods, bad cities, run down or whatever. A place you really didn't want to be was Braddock. But John Fetterman himself found out that there was a little bit of drug dealing going on and maybe some robberies. And he actually started walking around the city as a mayor with a shotgun. And look that up online. It's good, good material. Daniel Alameda, I did try keto, but only for short periods of time. I enjoy the diet. I enjoy eating fats, eggs, whole eggs, cheese, nuts, 
steak. I could easily do it one of these days. However, I still believe if you're trying to gain muscle mass and strength, carbohydrates do have a place in the diet of strength athletes. Yet a Griff, I'm not much of a coin collector, but I was there at that Delray Misfits podcast when one of the maniacs sent an authentic coin from the Third Reich, which is very rare. Anything you get from that period in history, say for about 1933 to 1945, that's German, that has the Nazi insignias on it or swastikas or what have you, is very rare because when the uh, Allies defeated Germany, they did a denazification process to try to remove the whole history and the affiliation of the Nazis with the country of Germany. And they destroyed a lot of the flags, banners, coins. And that was a very rare coin that Jason had. I think he still has it in his possession. It wasn't in mint condition, but still was very interesting to see. Slosser says, John Fetterman's a good role model. He loves cats. He loves animals. He gets my vote. You know, that's a good judge of character for a person. If you love animals, most, most often you should love people in most cases. And those that torture and don't care for animals, and I'm talking about chaining up, say, a dog, without feeding them or keep them out in the cold or something of that nature, neglecting their fresh water. That's a human being that needs correction. And by the way, Nazi Germany was the first country to actually pass animal rights laws. And that's a fact. So Chuck the cat abandoned or caught hell when he mentioned that he abandoned cats. And I think it's on one of the classic Dowry Dowry Misfits episodes and rightfully so, rightfully so. So Ryan K Productions says, Brad's playing Twister with chaps on. (laughs) Yes, I'm raccoon eyes. Adam took on a 300 plus pound power lifter and didn't back down. Well, the first time I met Adam, it was on a the Delray Misfits podcast, and he was associated with Nate. And I thought you knew Universal Order was like one of the top uh, internet sites in the world because of the way it was professionally done and that type of thing. And uh, Adam presented me with some of the best shorts I had to this day, which were tailor made for me. They had a very strong waistband and they had a new universal, new universal order insignia on it. And they were not too long, but high enough where you can get some sun on your legs. And it, when you did legs and got a pump, they would sort of stretch out. So I'm still using these shorts to this day, as well as a few t-shirts, very high quality material. And I want to go back to one of the strange things that I've, what Brad said about Adam was, he said, he used the term cringe. He says, some of Adam's videos are cringe. And I didn't know what that meant as far as referring to videos. And I sort of took a liking to Adam because of that. And some of the cookie cutters saying things like he shouldn't be on a podcast or things like that. And I just shook my head and thought that was ridiculous. Everyone is entitled to be on a podcast as far as I'm concerned. Everybody is unique and has something to say, something we all could learn from. I wouldn't shun anybody, nobody. And we pretty much had every different kind of people on our Delray Misfits podcast. We've had people that spent time in prison, jail. We've had whites, blacks, Jews, Haitians, I think we've had women, we've had feminist women, 
eh. We've had dope heads. We've had pot heads on. And a very good mix of people. And everyone deserves at least one shot. And that's what I intend to do is this podcast branches out with sponsorship as I'm getting a few offers now, I have to make a few decisions so we can get a mixture of guests on and let's hear your story. Let's bring some facts to the table, no matter what opinion you have, no censorship. Everyone has a voice. Early Kyler says, Diana Bowles is my blood pressure a little higher than I'd like. Any tips? Yes, staying hydrated. And the number one thing for blood pressure issues is magnesium. And I can say this with utmost certainty. Not only is my diet high in magnesium as I eat some form of plain nuts every day, usually walnuts, Brazil nuts. I'll eat those in my Big Lenny Super Salad. But I take the most bioavailable form of magnesium that I know of, magnesium glycinate. And I started taking that twice a day about a month ago. And I could see the difference. It, it does induce sleep. It, it makes you relaxed. And you know that it's being absorbed. And every time I was tested, and I was always shocked to find that my magnesium levels were low. And a lot of athletes' levels are low. So when you're following the Big Lenny Nutrition Program, it is good to have a blood test every once in a while to find out where your deficiencies are. And of course, you always want to use a food source. Your food, that particular nutrient, vitamin, mineral, whatever you're deficient in. But it's also good to use highly bioavailable supplements. And I've definitely reduced the amount of supplements I take. And you have to be careful with those, as I used to swallow 20 or 30 pills three times a day. And James Vest, as well as Dusty Hanshaw, had a problem with the steak. Sometimes when you sw- you can't swallow those, and if they go down your trachea, you're going to have a problem. So always try to get the food source of whatever you're deficient in. And Ryan K. Productions reports that testosterone sipping at equipoise both at 300 milligrams a week was wicked, great vascularity. Yes, Ryan K., uh, equipoise is very good for your red blood cell count. Of course, test is as well. But that sounds like a good dosage. Big J is reportedly using the 300 milligrams a week of testosterone. I probably should have reduced my dosage to 300 as 400 cause that extreme water retention about two, three weeks ago. And I am treating it with the oral diuretics, but I plan to cycle off them and see how it goes. And of course I have the problem again with the shins. Uh, When you get the water retention low extremities, first the skin bubbles up and then it breaks. Plus when it bubbles up, it's like a full garbage bag. If you walk next to something that's sharp and hit it, that brag's going to break. So I have plenty of silver sulfonamide leg cream I had to put back on the open wounds after the bubbles naturally burst. And as you can see, the water retention isn't severe, so I'm actually on 200 milligrams a week and 20 milligrams of Dianabol. And I tell you what, I feel full on 20 milligrams of Dianabol in addition to the test. So orals have their place. Don't get me wrong, and I'm not taking too high of a dose for my blood pressure is too high, and I'm certainly not causing a toxic effect on my liver at 20 milligrams, and especially me, a non-painkiller using, non-drinking, uh, well-hydrated super freak. So, Get it, Griff? It's been a while. I still have some in stock. Uh, Chloroprostan sodium is the name of the chemical. It's a a prostaglandin that 
also a name for it is lutalise, L-E-T-A-L-Y-S-E. And it's was used by bodybuilders to burn fat, and it supposedly had some applications for increasing muscle size. And I think it's pretty much fell out of favor. But one thing is certain, it will cause abdominal contractions. And usually, if you inject it into your muscle, and it's a small amount, use an insulin needle, similar to the way people inject growth hormone or melanotan 2 or regular basal insulins, it can cause you to, if you inject the stomach area, it can cause abdominal contractions and it'll make you go to the bathroom. So it's good for constipation. And when you go to the bathroom, you can feel it and you wipe yourself, it's kind of greasy. So it's purportedly has a great use in removing fatty acids from the body or breaking it down. So I'll try it one of these days, maybe do a live tutorial on it. Slauser says, why does he have a high white blood cell count? Can I help? Yes. That means there's some type of virus or infection in your body. And your body builds up white blood cells to fight that infection. Red blood cells carry oxygen in your body. And that's why anabolic steroid usage as well as testosterone, and particularly compounds like anadrol and equipoise, Pump. But you might want to get a blood test. Slaughters has high white blood cell count indicates there's an infection somewhere, a bacterial infection or a viral infection. Early Kyler says it was a great run with tests and equipoise, but the equipoise wrecked his blood vessel values and gave him some pretty bad headaches due to the extremely elevated hematocrit and blood pressure. Early Kyler. The cure for headaches in almost all cases is extra water. Matter of fact, the advice that I give people is when you start feeling a headache come on, sip a large glass of water, a bottle of water. It doesn't have to be ice cold. As a matter of fact, there's research showing that ice cold water is not the best way to drink it. You sip that water, I guarantee you, you might forget that you even had a headache. That's most of the causes of headaches. Uh, yes, I've had situations where I was taking mega dosage, which I won't ever do again, of PEDs. And yes, I've had headaches from that, but again, drink some water. And if you have some Tadalafil, which is a longer acting erectile dysfunction medication, whatever form you have it in, pill, liquid. I like to do that every other day. It's not only that helps with the pumps in the gym, it also helps with erectile dysfunction as well as lowering the blood pressure a little bit. So that may alleviate it. However, if you start overdosing Tadalafil or taking it every day, you probably could get a headache from that. But go with the water and don't forget the electrolytes. Salt is very important. And I recommend experimenting with all the types of salts. Matter of fact, in my cupboard, I have pink Himalayan salt right now and I was able to tame and some Celtic sea salt. Now a lot of people might say, oh, they're gimmicky, but try them out. And don't forget to have a little bit of your old iodized salt in there as well. Use a different combination of salts. Salt is a critical nutrient for strength athletes, bodybuilders, and general health. Chris Overholt, you got the shin check. I'll give you another one. These are started out as water blisters from the swelling. And when they naturally popped, anybody that ever had these? There's a hell of a lot of water in them. And there's like a, it's literally stretching the skin out when they pop. That skin underneath is basically ripped open. And that's not with riding a bike or touching any sharp objects either. So and now they have to heal. And believe me, right now they're on fire. But 
I'm having with cover with silver sulfonamide. And I feel the water level going down on me, which is able me to train harder, more intensely, as well as breathe better. So that's the most important thing. And I have to realize that certain dosages are not beneficial. Now, I came back to the conclusion that I should have been following old school protocol, and I'm going to get to that in a future podcast. The great Lee Frazier recommends some baby aspirin and acetylcysteine and some vitamin K. Also drink some cranberry juice every day for blood pressure. Thank you, Lee Frazier. I've taken everything. I haven't taken the acetylcysteine in a long time, but when budget allows it, I will definitely get that first. As well as going back to the vitamin K, which Meow Man recommended I take. And I probably should go back on some ubiquinol. Yeti Griff says Star Trek was commies. Yes, they were, to a point. Most of Hollywood was and is. And they started injecting that communistic propaganda into shows way back in the 50s where you can see it. And I'll go, go into detail on that in the future. Dankarona says love from North Korea. It's good to have you, Dankarona. I understand it's very difficult to communicate if you're currently in North Korea, but you managed to do it. And I have nothing but love and respect for the Korean people as well as the leadership. And I would like to see more dialogue with the United States. Danny, I haven't seen the kitty all day. Maybe she's outside. Danny Alameda, send me the blood work. Possibly do a screenshot of it, put it on Instagram if you know my personal number. Or contact me on Instagram, Danny, and I'll give you my personal number. But I would definitely like to see it. Lee Frazier says the misfits have multiplied. We connect to other misfits worldwide, national, international. We are freaks international. Relapse, so he had to step into cookie cutter mode. I'm glad you recognize that, Lee. Everybody's a porn addict. Everybody's a cookie cutter. DIY specialist says, I look good, Lenny. What's following the big Lenny principles? And those include belief in God as well as love for your fellow man. Rob 293 says, hello to the maniacs and the PMs. Yes, Basil Wallace. John Betterman has become much more moderate as he's recovered from his stroke. It is bizarre. I don't think the stroke did that. I think it was his conversion to a carnivore diet, which gave you common sense. And I'm still waiting the debate with vegan gains. And I'm going to go over many subjects with him. So, yes, Dylan Gallant, pray today. I typically do most of my praying in the morning and night. And in the morning, I recommend everybody schedule willing. Get up, obviously use the bathroom, get a nice cool glass of water. You can add some lemon juice, a little pink Himalayan salt, or better yet, you can go to my sponsor and get a scoop of the New World Nutritionals liver cleanse and sip that. Get outside in the direct sunlight, especially when it rises. Take your shirt off, sit in a chair, lean against your car, or any area of their sun, even if there's no sun, you're still going to get some of the effects of vitamin D. And meditate or pray first thing in the morning. Hold off on the phone. Do the meditating and the praying and go over your day in your mind. And block out the negativity. Sadly, most of the cookie cutters are going to their phone for porn right in the morning or turning on some type of demonic music. Take your pick. There's, all, there's a demonic message behind most of it. And going for some simple sugars like a donut or sweet roll or even a sugary cereal. So those are the things that are going to cause 
I have a very mediocre and lackluster day. Do I think Dr. Oz dominated the Bates versus John Fetterman? I think he did. Lee Fraser says the United Kingdom where he lives is a toilet these days. He loves the United Kingdom, but it's his toilet and someone's got to flush it soon as the crap is piling up. It stinks. It's sad that United Kingdom has gone from being the greatest nation on earth to a nation that's falsely blamed for the detriments of colonialism as well as white, so-called white privilege. And now they're facing a liberal attack. And I believe the roots of that started after World War II as everybody was so, we don't want to be like a Nazi. And I would like to understand why all those cookie cutter bands such as the Stones and the Beatles started spreading that feminine type of attitude and so-called music around the world. And I admit it started with Elvis. Actually, it started before him with jazz, but there's a whole history of the UK that's very sinister. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Big Daddy says, informs us that Tampa Bay Lightning is playing the Florida Panthers in the first round of the NHL playoffs. Should be a good series. Big Daddy always gives me the updates on the hockey as well as Vice's excellent wrestling documentaries. And I'm sure Big Lou is, will be attending all those Florida Panther games. Chris Overholt says any idiot can lift weights. It doesn't translate into athletic ability. Absolutely, Chris. However, an athlete that's proficient at lifting weights is going to be a better athlete because most cases he will be stronger and faster. And again, then again, there's a correct way to lift weights and there's an incorrect way to lift weights. Danny Alameda says, can you build muscle on a low carb diet or should he carb cycle? Danny, I suggest that you eat as many carbs as you can to reach your desired limit of muscle mass. And if you look at the protocols of Craig Goliath, who's well over 300 pounds, very low body fat, he's a big believer in carbohydrates. I believe that low carbs are best generally used for cutting as well as for general health and especially that low carb diet should be used by the average American that doesn't weight train barely does any physical activity sits at a computer all day or even worse doesn't even move and that's what mainly but I don't believe that low carb diets or carb cycling are the best thing to do is any type of athlete, particularly one trying to gain size and strength. And as, as I said before, when you're young, you should always be trying to increase your size and strength. Do I still take gabapentin? No, I stop. I just simply don't take it anymore. I, I don't have a connection with it anyway. And it's not really a thing you want to take unless you don't need it. A very disappointing story was a South Korean maniac gifted Brad with a nice World War II swastika with the Iron Cross in the upper left-hand corner uh, as a big flag. And I suggested Brad put it up in the weight room. And actually, the taco queen was there, and she screamed right away, that is not going up on this wall. But in the meantime, another maniac sent him the Russian communist flag with the hammer and the sickle on it and all that. And I think Brad still has it in his possession, but 
I would have liked to have seen that swastika on the wall, or at least put them together as like something out of the, one of the Rocky movies, you know, like next to each other, or that great wrestling feud when the Road Warriors wrestled the Russians and the old NWA back in the 80s. But no, Brad's. I would be more inclined to think he'd put up a hammer and sickle. Thank you, Matt Wright. Daniela Mita reports that he tried keto, but he looked small and didn't feel strong. Everyone said I looked skinny. That is true, Danny. You will not get the stomach bloating as I could go on keto and do an experiment, and I just may do that, but there's still bodybuilding stages for me to get on. There's still muscle to gain and strength to gain. Robert 293 says, Brad, never heard of her. Lee Fraser asks, anyone else feel like their head is about to explode? Uh Uh-oh. Mystical stab artist, isn't that a Freudian slip? My thoughts on the Apple River stabbing incident, that was self-defense, period. End of discussion. Danny Alameda, in case you weren't aware, the modern day Winston Churchill, Adam McLeod, had some issues with the surgically repaired knee. And I saw the x-ray, it was gruesome. The metal, steel screws and pins that were in his knee were bent and warped to quite a severe degree. And he had to get all that cleaned out and put together better than ever. So I'm praying for his recovery and I hope all maniacs do the same. And the things we can learn from Adam are, he's been through tragedies of life, tragedies that most of us, I hate to say it, probably would have given up or become immersed into drugs or alcohol or some other type of crutch, painkillers. And I'm sure Adam had to take a share of it, but never developed a painkiller addiction, never developed any type of alcoholism. Beat cancer, and I think that's through his attitude. Good family man. And what else can I say when he had the fight at J, Big J Masters? I was shocked at how confident Adam was, how fearless he was, and how he, he went with the flow. And it turned out to be in his favor. Now, we can all say what might have could have happened or should have happened, but the most impressive thing is he stuck in there. He didn't winch. And he did it the correct way. And there wasn't any type of charges being brought or doing out in public, which is not the way to settle disputes. It was done in somewhat of a sportsman's way, or at least that's what we made it appear to be. I want to thank Lou for getting that that fight going. And never seen him back down. And he's challenged himself, you know, entering the world of professional wrestling, entering some of the top boxing gyms and bodybuilding gyms, and a lot of people might say, oh, why is he going there, or he can't do this, or he can't do that, but he proved you wrong, and he did it, and he also had one of the best podcasts I think we've ever had with Jay, myself, Prince Andrew, and Brad. Uh, sad that it didn't last, but what we can learn from Adam is life is going to bring you shit. Life is going to bring you tragedy, but the key is to recover and get on with it. Come back better than ever. Don't give up. Remain positive, because we're here for a short time. Life doesn't wait for anybody. Nobody generally really cares about anybody, particularly when they leave us. Now, of course, I'm confident in the fact we'll see Rob Zell and many others in heaven very soon. But our our life on earth is just that. It's not, it's just a testing ground. It's very brief. We don't know when it'll, it'll leave us. And 
as you're going to see all the people that were so concerned about their benefits, their pensions, their ability to have a 401k retirement, you name it, is really not as important as they were told or brainwashed to be told. If you have a roof over your head, you have food on the table, you love your fellow man, you engage with them, you look out for the weak, you keep a vigilant eye against various negative forms in society. That's what life's all about. Because you can have that pension, you can have that, those investment portfolios, you can have those fleet of cars, you can have the insurance on your appliances and everything, but you can also be like Adam, who was almost cut in half as a kid, who had cancer ravage his body and he kicked the ass. and he's back in there for some painful surgeries and he's going to recover for it and he's teaching his children to do the same thing so adam's definitely a guy you'd want in a foxhole with or go to war with i guarantee you that that's just the vibe i get from him and again i wish him all the best and there's things that he disagree with he'll tell you things that I might have said or done that he's contacted me and disagreed with. And I respect that tremendously. I respect tremendously when someone tells me that. The honesty. And that's how we learn. And, you know, whatever you feel about Johnny Bravo, Vince Goodrum, the Cuban conservative, who I have nothing but good, positive interactions with with and admire all of them. They're all very intelligent, very entertaining, bring a lot to the table. If Adam has something, an issue with them, he'll bring it up. So we don't agree on everything, but there's a reason I call him the Wanted Winston Churchill. And there's nothing cringy about that. So what do you think about that? Yes, Danny Alameda, it was the best podcast ever. The old Dairy Misfits podcast, absolutely. Sit in bed, just listen to it. And I was always wanted it filmed. It would have been a very good experience having it filmed. Just to listen to the commentary and some of the opinions and points that were brought. It's not only it was very entertaining, it was very inspirational, it was very educational. And... It definitely showed a lot of the character of the podcast members and guests. Slauser says, Brad reminds me of that little shit in school that would personally make your day miserable. Well, Slauser's, that's a good point, and a common denominator of little shits are they the ones that like to go after the weaker, mentally or physically, and that's why you have to keep your head above all that. And like I've always said, stress, annoyance, aggravation, that all comes from here. If you let somebody else give you that, that's your problem. You're mentally weak. Now, if somebody wants to put their hands on you, that's a different story. You defend yourself with all of your might. And I'm not saying kill anybody, but in situations where you could be killed, you must kill them. But if you're assaulted, I would highly recommend now you protect yourself, you protect your loved ones, and you protect your property to a certain extent. Yes, and I know certain parts of this country are adopting some of the laws of Canada where you can't protect your personal property and home as it should be, and that's wrong. Your home is your personal space. I never violated the sanctity of anybody's home. And I, when somebody does that to me, they're gonna face a problem. So 
I want to welcome Robert Frank. Robert, are you still in Florida? I understand that you're, you don't like the slow pace, and I agree with you on that. And the heat coming up, it's probably starting this weekend. We're going to get a good six months of that unbearable heat and humidity, which I have to condition myself to. And <laughs> those so-called snowbirds have it right. And you get some bad thunderstorms here almost every single day during the summer months. And Robert Frank, I'm shocked that you were never asked to go on the podcast. I understand and I'm thankful for that you came to the Ruby Classic. That was a memorable event. And it wouldn't be the same without your presence there. But you know, let us know if you're still in Florida or when you plan on going back up north. And... Hopefully we can get a quick podcast in with you. That'd be nice. Mike Paul's blaming for that. I am to an extent. I can blame myself too. Frazier has a story about sockless Jamie. He would hold his stomach and wipe his dog's ass, ass with a sock. <laughs> Robert 293 says, Robert Frank, you're going to be 700 pounds to get on a, the podcast. Slosser said he did like Brad in some moments with Jason. And you. Yeah, everybody did. With Jay too, all of us. Danny Alameda says, what does it mean if your cholesterol is low? Well, Danny, that could mean that your cholesterol is doing what it's supposed to do. And that's in the manufacture of hormones in your body. DHEA, estrogen, testosterone, pregnenolone, they all come from cholesterol. Now, if it's low, that means you really, your body's really working to produce the hormones. So I wouldn't worry about that. If your cholesterol is high, I personally believe that's a result of high blood sugar. If your cholesterol is not being used for the purposes intended to. But I would never get on any type of cholesterol lowering or raising medications. Absolutely not. Two nightmare exes. What is my opinion on Martin Luther King Jr.? Martin Luther King Jr. was a tool of the media. He was basically a communist. He had a led a very immoral life, and I would say that I certainly did too. He didn't show the courage that I would expect that he was purported to have. If you look at some of those marches, he would jump and flinch every time you heard a something that sounded like a gunshot. If you want to see what a real man is, you look at Ronald Reagan when he did a speech in Germany shortly after he was shot by John Hinckley Jr. and recovered. He didn't jump or flinch. He simply said, missed me, look it up. So I don't have much of a high opinion on Martin Luther King. He was also a plagiarist where he took other people's speeches and used them as his own or parts of it. Danny Alameda says, please bring the misfits back. I will, Danny. Trust me on that. Basil Wallace says, how is Tim Anderson holding up? Well, Tim's very sick right now. And I saw his wife. And he's basically homebound. He's lost a lot of weight. But hopefully he's on the recovering end of that. And... You can't blame Tim totally for that, what happened at all. Tim had a great concept. He had a great thing going, but you can't blame Tim for that. And I certainly wouldn't. Tim has a great love for bodybuilding. And you've got to realize what, he trying, what he's trying to do in this day and age with the plan of fitnesses, uh, the crunch fitnesses and the conglomerates of the fitness chains. Trying to build a mom and pop gym in Delray Beach, Florida. That's a daunting task. 
but Tim would have done it if it wasn't for this overzealous zoning and building requirements of the city of Delray Beach, which sometimes I like to call the People's Republic of Delray Beach. That guy six well says, will the modern day Winston Churchill apologize to Bravo? If he feels he needs to, Adam will do it. But if he doesn't, you got to respect his decision. Me personally, I'm not one for apologies because I don't have any bad blood with anyone. Uh, you can have disagreements with people. I think that's a natural, healthy part of life. That doesn't mean you have to go have a physical confrontation or even worse. Road to a thousand on bench press. Welcome to this historic Big Lenny podcast, episode 14. It takes a man to tell another man you love them so much. And that's the truth. And when you can tell that to another man, that's showing true character and why we're put on this earth. And what does love mean? You want the best for them. You protect that person if they needed it. You give that person a clean glass of water, a meal if they needed it, a place to sleep if they needed it, or some type of shelter. That's the greatest gift you can give your man, as well as a positive message about eternity, as well as their life. When, and this has been planned, society throws negativity at all of us. They've been doing it for years. The judicial system, giving people records, telling people they can't do this, they can't do that, they're ineligible to do this, not giving them another chance. The medical establishment telling people that they're have some disease that's uncurable and they need to take medications. The school system telling a young child and his parents that they need to be held back. They need to go in a different special school or they need to take medication. As well as adults who are told they need psychiatric counseling when in reality they need a good diet, good sleep, and some good water. Yes, Meow Man Andrew Kalora will definitely be one of the first when the Big Lenny podcast branches out. My thoughts on schools and universities teaching children to fight the patriarchy? That is one of the most insane things I've ever heard. When in history has children been told to do that? Oh, I can think of a few. Communist China. Most of the communist countries look down on educated and your educated parents, remove them from their occupations. Pol Pot in Cambodia, he did that. Now it's probably true. Most of the parents today, horrible parents. I've seen situations where parents watch porn with their kids. I've heard of it, which to me is unthinkable. Parents allowing them to drink and smoke. Another unthinkable tragedy, but society's getting off the values, the core values, the values that make everything else possible. And those are family unity, healthy, natural family meals together. interaction with like-minded citizens, as well as dialogue with people that aren't of the same opinion of you, a belief in God, a belief in this country, and what made this country what it is, the higher standard of living, the ability to become whatever you want in this country. Does everyone feel that today? Seems to me a lot of roadblocks are put up. There's a lot of 
people getting discouraged because of affirmative action. There are different quotas. Or those people in different occupations that see those on welfare or disability living a higher standard than they are. And of course, certain members of our society, which aren't traditional, being given more rights, civil rights, and rights in general as the average citizen. That's very discouraging. So yes, we're living at bad times. Danny Alameda says, is drinking 40 grams of whey protein too much for your digestive system? Absolutely not, Danny Alameda. Uh, there's many factors on how, many, how much protein you can and should intake. Uh, but generally, I, I would suggest anybody in the strength sports should at least take in 40 or 50 grams of protein, either from a whey protein supplement, such as my sponsor, New World Nutritionals, which has the best whey protein isolate on the market, uh, or whole food sources. But try not to go over 100 grams, 150 grams of protein. I have many times, but many factors are going to dictate how much protein you can utilize and absorb. The size of you, your height, your weight, how many calories you're burning, as well as how much tissue you're breaking down in the gym. And don't forget, PEDs increase the rate of protein synthesis, so you are definitely able to make more use of the protein you take in. No water road to a thousand pound bench press right now. That's right, Lee Frazier. A freak is a compliment. Different is a compliment. Strange is a compliment. Unusual is a compliment. Weird, that's an old one, it's a compliment. That's what the normies say. How do you like that? That's a new word to add to the cookie cutter list. The normies. I read a comment from a maniac saying, Brad's doing what's normal. Going to the Keys. <laughs> I guess it is if you're a normie. But do you want to be a normie? Or do you want to be a freak? Do you want to think like a normie? You're headed down the road to misery. Yes, that guy six. Lee Frazier is a legend. So are the rest of you maniacs. AOL says elevate the shins for less retention. The only time I elevate the shins ALO is probably when I'm laying in bed. But Lee, did I ever get to sniff on Emma's feet? That was pretty close. I kind of liked Emma when she was a little out of shape. I saw her one time at a gym and she she put on some weight and she said she's out of shape she looked great but Emma did have a very sexy persona about her and I just wish any someone would find out if her whereabouts and how she's doing no pension Danny Alameda do I miss the hospital no that was brain rot it's unintelligence. It's like being a trained monkey almost. You know, the late great Rob Zilla said one of the things he hated about being a postal worker, which, and of course a postal worker is a very necessary job in society. I'm not looking down on it. But he said to me, Lenny, I feel like a trained monkey and a trained monkey could do this job. And I thought to myself, Rob, you're not, that's not you. You're a people person. Uh, I just wish you could have made in contact with me and we could have kept doing what we're doing and branching out. And I really think things would have turned out differently, but what happened happened. All I can say is we'll see. Learned a lot from me. I learned how to love others. And I learned how to care for others from you. Herrick Hawkins is what I think about the recently slayed PM in Chicago. 
I'm not really sure, but what I can say is that black women, female Uber driver that was shot by that cookie cutter in Ohio was a very disgusting act, to tell you the truth. And there's a video of it, so. Yes, Slazers, I always wonder why I'm having these problems, but it's what it is, it's very simply my left ventricle function isn't up to par. And occasionally, and it's caused, yes, by PEDs, a little bit too much test, particularly the 400 milligram dosage over time, and it does take a few months, I'll get fluid buildup to where it causes a lot of water retention in the gut, in the chest cavity, as well as the lower body, legs, and groin. And as you can see, I was I would go in the hospital probably about every six months to a year these past few years and get an IV of diuretic. And it's been about six months since I had that done. Of course, I had the fluid build up and I reduced my testosterone dosage to 200. I'm back on oral uh, diuretics. And I decided to add the 20 milligrams of D-ball as my past history has shown that orals do not cause much water retention. And of course, I want to thank the sponsor that sent me this, Diana Ball, as I really seem to get a shout out for him. So, <laughs> Lee Frazier says, I will pick on my feet. Bob Vegan Yoda says potassium. Yes, I do eat a lot of bananas as well as potatoes. I don't think potassium supplements are worth it at all. I really don't. John Romero, Misfit Maniacs, about to start a new 40-hour 40 40 per week job. J-O-B. Don't say that. Don't say the word job. I want you to say, I'm going to get compensation for my services. J-O-B is a cookie-cutter term. Work is a cookie-cutter term. Girlfriend is a severe cookie-cutter term, as well as I'm going to school. I'm going to church. No, you're going to worship the Lord. Say that. Say, I'm going to gain information instead of going to school. That's what the cookie cutter verbiage is. John's asking for my advice on making the adjustment back into the rat race. That is a good term for the rat race is exactly what it is. You're going on society's terms, which we all have to do on occasion, which I call playing the game. But what you don't want to do is be on that rat race forever. It's just like a treadmill going nowhere. So but very simply, John, as you go back to the cookie cutter of the world of the workplace, remember, stick to yourself. Don't engage in the gossip. Don't become friends with anybody. Try to stay out of relationships with your coworkers. Keep your eyes open, your mouth shut. Concentrate on your own business. And remember that nobody cares about you on that place of employment and your employer certainly doesn't. So work smart, don't show emotion, don't engage in the gossip. And a lot of that gossip comes at the lunch breaks or whatever, you're sitting down in a cafeteria or something or a table, lunchroom with cookie cutter employees, eat your food, keep your Look at your phone or something intelligent. Keep your head down on the food, John. And remember, play the game. Manjit Singh says, Big Lenny, you beast. I'm glad to catch you live. I'm glad to have you on the Big Lenny podcast, episode 14. Buff Vegan Yoda has a good piece of advice. Let food be thy medicine. Thank you, sir. Do I think Iran and Israel will go to war? Danny, <laughs> for Iran to say they have 
new weapons that they're going to use on Israel. Here's what I hope the situation turns out to be when I think it is. Basically, Iran had to do something. And I believe there's a strong possibility that they knew that their attack would be intercepted. But they did it anyway. And that's not something that I would put too much stock in, but I have a certain inkling that's what might have happened. They just have to look like they're sticking up for their, their country. Do I think they actually believe that they're going to, they have these new weapons that's going to destroy Israel and obviously the allies protecting Israel? No, they can't be that foolish. So Danny, I believe that this will be a very, very quick end to that. That's just my opinion at the time. Dylan Gallant, I love you too, sir. Thank you very much. Harry F. Callahan wants to see the Dark Lord. Jason Genova. Harold Bederson says, thoughts on Allah. Allah is God. Dylan Galan says, the PM's in jail scared to get you off the phone. Yeah, when I was there as a 370 pounder way back in 1997, one of the guards said that I have the record as the longest person holding up the pay phone which was like 35 minutes of my mother screaming at me for ordering that Diana while from Thailand. And I can tell you this, white cookie cutters or whatever would get on that cell phone trying to make a call, call the bail bondsman or whatever, and you hear PM shouting because the room was packed. Yo, get off the phone, cracker. I need to make my calls. But I just sat on that phone for a half an hour. Nobody said a peep. That's what 375 pounds of muscle will do for you. And I also want to say the last time I did a short weekend in jail, three years ago, when I went in to use the bathroom, which is basically an open area, and there's a big stainless steel slab and everything's open. Anytime a PM would walk into that room and I was sitting on a toilet, about six to eight of them walked out for whatever reason, I don't know, so... Do I remember that giant female bodybuilder porn star on one Misfit episode? If you're referring to uh, Jason's girl, that's the only one I would think of. Thank you, MSDK. Bringing up an old school supplement, Gamma Orizanol. I believe Gamma Orizanol is the product or the compound that they get the saw palmetto from and i think that taking that is a few steps away from the beta testosterone in it i believe but gamma arosinol was actually a supplement that was popular in the 70s and early 80s and then came back in the 90s it was called gamma o i haven't heard that name in this dk i'm going to do some research on it after this podcast. Thanks for bringing that up, and thank you for your contribution to the Big Lenny podcast. Danny Alamito, yes, I pray before each meal. And I pray before bed when I get up in the morning. No eating of raw eggs anymore. Not at all. Lee Fraser says, Rob is fermenting. Positive J, I believe almost all music is devil music. Most of the music, whether you call it rock and roll, you call it rock, you call it rap, whatever. The message is fun, being high.
Certainly not love for your fellow man. Buzz McAllister says he's still waiting for Brad to move to Canada. That's why we need Brad on a podcast. Brad needs to explain some of the statements he's made. And when you watch those classic Delray Misfits podcasts and episodes, Brad has to have some accountability for some of the things he said. I believe the Mensa workout philosophy is very sound. However, I do believe that you do need to probably do more sets than he recommends. But the point is, is you don't need to stuff overstuff yourself with garbage as far as your nutritional program. And you do need to train very intensely and give that muscle a message. You need to tear down those fibers so it can rebuild itself better than ever. Lee Fraser loves, loves the Beatles and Stones. You know, they are from England, but they are hippies. So we'd have to hose him down as he has to work tomorrow. He wouldn't be at Woodstock. He'd be in the factories. So Lee, you're a hardcore blue call period of his time. And I like, you know, I recommend all you may actually look up some of the British collection agents or bar bouncers. There's many stories on them. And these are very, very tough men, old school men that lifted the heavy weights, took the Diana ball, took the test, hit the heavy bag. Ryan, I am always on Cameo. Book a Cameo with the real big Lenny at Cameo.com. Some of the Cameos I've done are legendary. And that's a great way that I make personal connections with the maniacs forever. Ahima 64 is training for a Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition. Ahima 64, I want you to enter that competition knowing that you're well-rested, well-hydrated, well-fed, and have the confidence to take your body to places it's never went before, and you must and will be the victor. And no matter what hype you hear, what you see anybody can and will be beaten sir thank you for bringing that up and all the maniacs will be in your corner with prayer and positive thoughts sir and it gives me great honor to recognize a maniac and their competitive pursuits Harold Betterson, I want to shout out Wayne Cousin on this Big Lenny podcast. Lee Fraser, Miss Fitz shouldn't hold grudges at all. However, there may be more than a grudge for some. It may be some control or lack of it. Ryan asked my thoughts on Wes Watson. I actually called out Wes Watson years ago through Rob Zilla. He gave me an appropriate response, and I'm very, very satisfied, and I respect him for it, as I accused him of trying to glorify the criminal life, and he t- assured me that wasn't his intention at all. I also said he was a cookie cutter for the tattoos, which he sort of laughed at, so... Jimmy C. Avery says, we all live forever in heaven or hell. Thank you, Protein Jeans. Thank you for your compliments. And I will never let the maniacs down. As long as I'm on this earth, I will maintain the Big Lenny Lives, BigLennyCameos.com, The Real Big Lenny and meet and greets, workouts, and very soon podcast collaborations, collaborations. And I'd like to mention 
which I mentioned briefly before. New World Nutritionals, this protein sponsor of Big Lenny, as well as Amino Asylum. Incredible products, result producing products, period. And also dairymisfitsgear.com. That's right, Lee Fraser. We must protect each other. Vince Goodrum, the great one. Welcome to the live. As you may know, the modern day Winston Churchill had a knee operation to put back the wear and tear and damage caused by his earlier operations. So glad to have you on, Vince. You've always been one of my favorites, go-tos, and you're one of the, probably the most underrated human being on the internet with your candid wisdom, your honesty, your intelligence, and your ability to communicate those effectively to a wide range of viewers. So... Your day will come, Vince, whether you want it or not, as far as big time. He said he's everything Brad wants to be. He has a beard, long hair, tattoo, and Lee just recently lost his job living in his disabled brother's spare room. Well, Lee, I wouldn't worry about that. A J-O-B is a J-O-B. Another one will come along. Just continue your training, eating, sleeping, and learning. And loving one another. That's the important thing in life. Danny, I'll eat it. The one thing I did disliked about Jane and Jason was when I first met Jason, him and his mother were very, very vocal and somewhat bothersome. But Jason's turned that around. Jason's into what Jason is wanting, and I respect his decisions. Joe D is in Youngstown, Ohio. I heard a lot of things about Youngstown, Ohio. That was a rough and tough area, at least back in the 70s and 80s. Dylan Gallon says, will Brad remove his tattoos? I think he will. Keep pressing them, maniacs. See, Brad works through peer pressure. All right, maniacs, this concludes this historic Big Lenny podcast, episode 14. And remember, like the modern-day Winston Churchill, bring on life's experiences, the tragedies, the heartbreaks, anything and everything. D-Blaze, maniac from Winnipeg. Thank you, sir. Love you, Joe D. Dylan Gallon says, will Brad have the rough crowd over this weekend? Well, isn't this Saturday 420? We'll see. Thank you. Get the sleep, get the mail in. Good night, Road to a Thousand.